All right, we are checking in. We have finished watching the Summer Game Fest. Yeah. We are. Tur- turns out you don't even need to watch Summer Game Fest to know what happened. Exactly. You were giving me the bl- blow by blow, and I could hear everything that was happening. Exactly. It actually turned out fine. Uh, we are getting into LA, but it's very trafficy, so we thought this would be a good time to. Like clockwork, that LA traffic. I know, right? You know exactly where it's going to be. Exactly. Um. You know, some people said, well, aren't you worried that your road trip, you're going to miss Summer Game Fest? You're not going to be there to experience all the excitement, all the hype reveals, all the pop-off moments. Well, guess what? Maybe we had the right idea all along. Right. Just maybe. Kind of a mediocre showcase, I would say. We just looked at Twitter, or Jeff's own Twitter poll of what people would grade the show. And what did you say? Most people gave it a... D and below. A D or below. Yeah. He just just put it up. We gave it a C. Yeah. Um, Most people were giving it a D and below, so it seems like not a lot of excitement overall for it. Although, he was online over this last weekend saying, you know, don't expect, don't get your expectations out of control. So, I mean, I think he knew what he had to work with. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and was, you know, trying to set those expectations. But, yeah. you know, still, if people, you know, when people see a big show like this, they're like, well, why would you even do it if you didn't have something big to show? Yes, so people are going to have expectations no matter what you it's, say. It's hard to completely talk people off of whatever game that they had in their exactly. mind. So, like, the Kingdom Hearts fans were still hoping. Yeah. The Mega, Mega Man, Man fans. fans. Yep. I'm glad that I'm at a point in my life where, where these have... events can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> I, I'll watch it for what it is. I'll, I'll evaluate yeah. it, but I, I don't really have the the huge highs and lows anymore. You know, right, right, exactly. You're pretty like you're pretty even. Yeah. When like, it comes huh, to this, that. some people are just like living or dying by right. these announcements, and it's just hard to to kind of get your hopes up and stuff. But yeah. What was the most exciting thing that you saw in this thing? Um, I don't know if it was exciting. I thought it was interesting. The Lego Horizon game, I think that was yeah, the first that game, the that, first he game had that he had coming to Switch yeah. in addition to PlayStation. You know, right. with, with this and um, Astro Bot, kind of seeing PlayStation getting into more of this like whimsical... I mean, I don't know how the story content of Horizon is going to translate to a right. Lego game with the obliteration of mankind. Um but, but it's fun to see Aloy, you know, a character that they're trying to build up. Yeah, it looks really cool. from the play, the, you know, the PlayStation universe. Right. Like PIP right. that they're doing something different with. So but that's I, pretty cool. I'm racking my mind to think of any other instances where yeah. PlayStation IP has been on a Nintendo platform. Right. I'm not coming up with anything. doesn't mean it hasn't ever happened, but it's definitely a rare, a rare thing. occurrence. So it's yeah. like, oh, we're, we're kind of breaking some boundaries here. Okay. Right, right. The other thing breaking boundaries that I thought was interesting was the um, SNK, SNK Capcom mm-hmm. Street Fighter yeah. uh, Fatal Fury crossover. Yeah. Which I I had you describe that several times. I'm like, wait, what's happening exactly. right now? Who are, the, who are the yeah. characters? Yeah, so two uh, Fatal Fury characters joining two Street Fighter veterans. Right. We figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those yeah. were like, you know, the bitter rival series of yeah. 2D fighting games for so long. So it's kind of neat to see them making peace. And, right. Uh, Terry Bogard, a uh, great Smash Brothers character, now soon to be a great Street Fighters character. Maybe. I know. Yeah. Terry Bogard's getting some play, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, the other thing that we, we saw that was pretty interesting is the stream numbers taking like a huge dive oh, you were, in yeah. the second half. And I've kind of felt bad because they, they really saved some of the bigger reveals to the second half. Obviously the, the big like Monster Hunter Wild with the developer, you know, on stage revealing new new trailers and stuff like that is safe for like the one last thing or the, the show closer. And the stream numbers just took a nose dive from like yeah, so, 600 to like 180. So, so there was that very yikes. long ad that happened right before the, the, chicken, the, the monster chicken hunter ad. with the chicken and you said like Chris Hemsworth was in it yeah and, like, all, yeah a lot of famous actors were in it that was like minutes long for right. this for you know this mobile game right and yeah you said like the 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 viewership got it's cut in, in half yeah it was basically so, like yeah exactly cut in half you can't be happy if you you know have this primo announcement mm-hmm. you know with this big IP like monster hunter and it's like wait you kind of cut my legs out from under me. Yeah, like we save this for your show closer. Yeah, so and that's... And we basically half the audience. That's got to be a bit of a bummer and they definitely right. keep an eye on that stuff of like, you know, exactly. how did the viewership go up and down relating to right. your right. announcement. So yeah, that's that was, that's an interesting mm-hmm. callback. Jeff also, you know, he had this interesting monologue at the beginning 
where he was talking like about how industry. he acknowledged it had been yeah. a challenging times in the industry. Um, made, you know, made this point that you know the industry is evolving, right? And I think he was trying to you know, at, you know, make the comparison of you know the industry is evol evolving. That's that's going to relate to what you are going to see yeah. in my show today, right? Where right. you know people from talented studios are moving on. You know, you don't need a huge team. He talked about the individual solo developers. Yeah, he's really putting a lot of times, focus on that. Yeah, many times. Um, I thought that was an interesting point. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, yeah, it's true. The industry is definitely evolving. It's good to see him um, acknowledge, acknowledge, that. acknowledge yeah. the hard times. Totally. But, but again, you know, it didn't really result in a, in a like a block blus, blockbuster showcase. summer game fest yeah, exactly. showcase. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 Interesting way to position it, though, and something that needs to be watched still and just to see, like, what, how, you know, what happens with that. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, there, you know, I'll, the show may have been overshadowed by the info that came out yesterday about like, hey, you know, these sponsored segments and the show cost this much money. Right. We'll talk about that more in the podcast this yeah, week because we need yeah. a bit more, you know, space to talk about that properly. Yeah, we definitely have a lot of insights into that, though. Right, right. Um, and it's a different, you know, interesting lens. And I think, you know, as people were watching the show, they were kind of thinking of like, well... How much what, did things what, cost? How did this? How did this game how did get this into the end show? Up and how, in the how did the game in the showcase? And, you know, yeah. I I think, I think in the future, like he should be more transparent about right. what what is and isn't An a ad. sponsored segment. Right. Sometimes it's easy to tell. Sometimes it's, it's easy like, to tell. Sometimes it isn't. It's like okay, I'm watching a commercial now, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a trailer yeah. that is you know That's paid bleeds over. to get placement. You know, blending in with the other like editorial style right. stuff. So right, right. That's I. Th he always has a big to do coming out of one of these I shows. Know. He always fixes the last issue, to only to have a new issue come up. To have up. a new issue pop it's up. It's like a never ending game of whack. That is the tradition with these showcases. Whether it's Summer Game Fest or TGAs, he just has something to fix every time. Right. So I'm sure he'll look into that and hopefully address it but right. yeah it just seems to be like a ev never-ending thing for him but you know okay so we're past the stream for us like the meat of the show is the hands-on right and that's what we're going to be doing the next two days right, so that's right. why we kind of had a low-key approach to the show itself it's like all right we'll see what this is but we're going to be going and playing some of these games yeah a lot of the games they showed we are going weekend. to be playing them so, so our opinions might evolve on like, something might really wow us once we right. actually get our hands on it exactly so that you know that's why we're you know recording in over the weekend and checking in because yeah. there's a lot more to do there's a lot more to do exactly um, but yeah, that's our quick little recap of the show itself, Summer Summer Game Fest Showcase. And we're going to keep driving. We're almost to L.A. And then we'll check back with you when we get to the play days.